First of all, I would like to say thank you to Population Matter for this time and opportunity to share our message. And most importantly, to share our experience from the field, from the places where reality happens, where there is um, daily, in a daily basis, we are encountering these stories and women who are at the front line of the situations and challenges that uh, are created by, by the overexploitation of the environment and situations like climate change, et cetera. For me personally, I strongly believe in the importance of educating women and young girls and giving them access to family planning. What we are seeing now more than ever before is that women want to have a say and want to have control over their own bodies and their own decisions. And it starts from there when women have that option and that opportunity. So when we go to remote areas, especially in Colombia, um, what we've seen is they are asking us to help them with family planning. Why? Because that's the first step. When they, can, they have the, the power to decide when they want to have children and how many children they, they want, that allows them to start preparing for the future and the future that starts right there. It's incredible to see that 16, 14 years old girls, when they have this opportunity to start family taking methods for family planning, immediately what they decide is to continue their education, finish their high school or finish their elementary school, and then continue to go into that. And what we're seeing is by having more time to spend on education, many times, it reduced the impact on the demand of resources because there is not many, many mouths to feed. So what we're seeing is more and more women are coming to us, asking us to help them because it's, it's just the first door that opens an incredible scope of opportunities. I think there, there is a stigma, there is a taboo, but we have to break those stigmas. We need to start being more conscious about the change and that we are enhancing our approach on different issues. Um, I will say, yeah, 15 years ago, when we start talking about family planning, it was more complicated and it was an intricate issue, but things are changing. I think women are also now more empowered and in a place where we want to we want to have access to our basic rights. And family planning is a basic right. From my experience, what I see it in the field is that women want to have access to family planning. They really, really need it. And maybe many of them don't do it because simply there is no an opportunity. Logistically, it's difficult. They require to travel to cities, to small towns, multiple times to be able to access to these methods. And logistically difficult, not only for transportation, but also who is going to take care of the kids while they go down to the town and get the procedures. So they, in many, many times, don't do it because it's difficult and hard. But when organizations and people who care about this deeply, come and support them and provide these methods and these ways to do it, they are happy to get involved. They are happy to be part of the solution and they are happy to be part of a network of women who support each other. And this, I think uh, politicians sometimes, unfortunately, are disconnected from reality, what it happens in the daily basis. And sometimes there is a huge gap between where they are, where they work, and what happened in the homes and in the field. So I will encourage them to change their perception, to be open about and not to be afraid, because they will be surprised that many women will be even more grateful for them supporting that, that trying to suppress it and trying to pretend that it's an issue that we shouldn't be addressing or talking. This is an issue that it has to be spoken about a taboo, it doesn't really help. And the contrary creates more difficulties and more obstacles. And as I say, women and young women are ready and we want this change. I, I want to remain positive 
about uh, an outcome from COP26, and perhaps that this one will be different from the ones before. Politicians and the governments need to address this issue, not as an economical uh, issue only, but we are talking about humans' lives. We are talking about disasters that are terrible, that cost tons of millions of lives. And unfortunately, if we don't act quickly, it's going to be more complicated and more disasters and more pain and sorrow. And what we want is to remove perhaps perceptions or obstacles that are not there really, because we want to act and we all want a planet where we all, all can live together, where it's not a competition, but a collaboration and where we actually can be in balance with nature. My message to COP26 delegates is we are hoping that your hearts and your minds are open. And I ask the universe for wisdom for you and to see that what you are, what you are doing right now, it can benefit the planet in a tremendous way or can be negative. And we hope that all of this will be positive for the good of everyone in the planet. So I send you all of my good energy and perhaps you would like to spend time in nature after this COP and meeting and intense uh, 12 days of conversations and recharge you, your energy in, in nature that is the fountain of life and who speaks so loudly to us. And by connecting your heart, your mind, and your spirit with all the good of the universe, I think was the change deeply, deeply inside that we need to help others and to help ourselves. Good luck in COP26. And we really hope that uh, a good outcome is, is coming from the meeting. Thank you.